I forgot to mention something else about the addiction. It's not just alcoholism or drugs. You know, now people are addicted to pharmaceutical drugs. People are addicted to uh, television and video games and our cell phones and the internet. People are addicted to violence. You know, when they say uh, someone was shot and then there's someone with a video of it and you can actually watch them getting shot and die right on your cell phone. You know, we all, we all wanna see what happened. People are addicted to sugar. People are addicted to uh, petroleum. Polyester is made from petroleum. Some people don't even know that. And we're addicted to um, eating dead animals. So there's so many things that we're addicted to right now. And when we look in the mirror and we don't see anything wrong with it, there's a disconnect. So um, people are intoxicated with, with life. People are intoxicated with living in time and space and not having to think about the spirit or the ramifications of their lifestyle. So those are some of the changes that I would like to see in the world. And those are some of the changes that I'm, I've made and I'm striving to live by. Good job. We're basically addicted to caucasity, to um, conditions and standards that were brought to us from people from the Caucasus Mountains. And um, we just gotta step out of those values somehow. Everyone, not just black people or people of color, but people of European descent need to step away from those values. Cause that's, those are the values that are destroying the earth. Those are the values that are um, wanting to set up a police state. Why are, we, why are we holding those values? How, how can we break free of the values of caucasity without judgment, without being mad at white people or without you know, white people being afraid of what will happen if, if the power is spread equally? Those are fears because we're addicted to an illusion within an illusion. How can anybody win being addicted to an illusion, within an illusion. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> Puja, and now it's time for day 10, global prayer, healing from post-traumatic slave syndrome. And as I mentioned in the previous video, as I mentioned in the previous video, I'm focusing on this, uh, Alignment right here with Ra, Juhuti, and Heteru in the sign of Sidereal Taurus. And I've been referring a lot to the myth of um, Ra, Juhuti, and Heteru. So I wanted to point out to you that you can learn more about the myth in this book, Glorious Light Meditation by Dr. Moana Ashby. And in the book, it, it goes into detail about the uh, creation myth and the uh, myth of Heteru and Sekhmet and Ra and Jehuti. And um, I think I'm gonna do some more work with this myth because it really defines where humanity is, how we're drunk with the illusion and the, um, the wisdom of the cosmic mind, divine intellect can snap us out of this illusion. It's one way. So I wanted to start with this paragraph. Ra created human beings and he ruled the earth for thousands of years. A time came when human beings began to feel arrogant and egoistic. They began to think that Ra was old and weak and that he was not the creator, but that they sustained themselves without any divine agency. They began to blaspheme and ridicule him. This was reported to Ra by his ministers and courtiers, the Neturu, the gods and goddesses of the creation. And Ra decided to punish the unrighteous human being by letting loose upon them his daughter, Heteru, who would be the instrument of his judgment upon them. Heteru transformed herself into the form of a lioness. She began to kill the unrighteous people and then liked it so much that she began to kill indiscriminately. She left Kemet in search of more prey and the Heteru wondered if she would ever stop 
or if she would kill everyone, including the gods and goddesses as well. When she left Egypt, it was devastated. Gloom filled the atmosphere. Everything was in decline. The forces of darkness, chaos, injustice, unrighteousness, and evil began to take control of the land because Heteru, who was the power of Ra, the power of the life force energy, which he used to uphold righteousness and truth, had left the land. Ra, the supreme being, creator of the gods and goddesses and the entire universe, became sorrowful at the loss of his daughter, his very power. Hetadu took pleasure in her new form. She killed everything she could find. She lived in the forest and took delight in causing fear and pain. Ra called the gods and goddesses and asked who would bring his beautiful daughter back. Jehuti realized that if he was to, well, Jehuti accepted and realized that if he was to accomplish his dangerous task, he would need to be clever in order to avoid being Hetadu's next meal. So he transformed himself into the form of a harmless baboon and then he set out to find Hetaru. And it goes on from there. He told her four parables and she remembered her divinity. So I started um, to write songs about the parables and I stopped for some reason. So I'm going to, uh, when this series is over, I'm going to go back and um, do some more work from this story of Jehuti and Hetaru and Ra. Hatep.